please. Some patients, when they arrive in hospital, need lifting out of the ambulance. In fact, lifting patients from one place to another in a hospital is routine and needs not only great care, but well-designed equipment. My name is Ed Sen. I'm a clinical technologist for the medical physics department at the Whittington Hospital in North London. What my job entails is dealing with all equipment that is in a hospital that doctors and nurses use, uh, which is attached to patients indirectly or directly. Uh, my job is to service, calibrate, look after, assess, maybe even purchasing in looking at new research and all medical equipment. This is a bath waste used to put patients into the bath and it runs on a ratchet and chain system combined with a runner. And what I will do is I will turn this wheel eight times, which in length terms would work out just over 12 metres. Although the patient only moves around about half a metre. So now I'll wheel you into the bath. Put the brakes on for health and safety. And lower you down. Okay, Rakesh, can you explain to me what we're going to be doing with the hoist? Uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be doing a load test using the scales. By using these weights, which have a total mass of 300 kilograms, I'm going to raise the weights off the floor. And I've noticed that when you pull the weights up, the hoist it's funny, it's on. It pulls itself to the centre of gravity. That's right, yes. Okay, well I've got a similar lead screw here and motor, which I think I can explain how it works. This is the motor, and this is the lead screw, and this is the shaft. And what happens is, once you activate the upward motion, this motor spins one way, and the, staff, the shaft stays, uh, the cylinder stays still, while the lead screw itself goes up and down the shaft, hence the upward motion. Right. And if it comes the other way, hence the downward motion. Hi, Miles. Can you show me how you transfer a patient from the bed to the chair and back from the chair to the bed again? Yes, certainly. Eddie here is somebody who obviously who hasn't been transferring on his own, so we're not sure how he's going to transfer using his legs. So we're going to use a hoist and um, I'm going to need a hand on the other side just so that I can row him and put the sling under him and then we transfer him from the bed to the chair. So if you pop the bed up so that you don't have to lean over on top of Ed, so just pump the bed up so that both you and I don't have to have back problems. That's enough. Okay. So Ed, if you row over towards your right side and then row back, Ed. Good. And we just have to check that it's actually supporting him on both sides. Now the next bit is actually putting the bottom sling under. Okay. Make sure you've got the sling there. And then we're going to cross them over. Brilliant. Over there. That's it. And same from the top? No, just hold on to the top. The top doesn't cross over, it's just the bottom bit that crosses over. And then we're ready for our hoist, to hoist him out into the chair. Okay. Okay. And attach the sling to the hoist. And attach the sling. Now the head bit goes round, so we need to turn. That's the head, so that bit goes there in and under well done yeah and the other bit we have to wait until i do this side as well Ooh, the patient is very good he's got very good head control there <laughs> lifting his head goodness okay and then we can do this bit they go under that if you want you can put your hands up here or you can hold them onto your tummy I'll hold yeah okay. the reason why we have a lot of um, patient lifting equipment is it's not only beneficial towards the patient but it's up. beneficial towards the staff so because now. it uh, saves them from doing manual lifting which is a major cause of back problems which yeah. is quite um, quite a big thing so the, the lifting equipment enables the staff to use an aid to lift the patients and transfer them without hurting and themselves thing at the top there okay you're right, Ed. 
I'm fine, thank you. Good. And I'm just going to move you towards me. Okay, well done. At the back, I'll just bring back the legs again. Yeah. Okay, and we're ready to go down. Nice and slowly. Jiggly, you being our radiographer, would you kindly explain to me how this x-ray unit works in comparison to our patient here? Okay. Right, this machine is what we call the x-ray tube and it can move in all the directions in order to be versatile to do any x-ray you want in any position. The buttons here on the handles, um, both will do the same job. They will move the machine up and down and back and forth. Okay. We also have two buttons here that will do the same job. And then there are buttons, both, both have left and right hand control so that we can do with, with whichever hand is um, convenient to do with. This will move the machine round and back round the other way as well. Okay, and we have individual buttons to move in different dimensions. We have the up and down button. We also have the back and forth button and then a side to side button, okay? And we have one button that will turn the machine in a different direction, like this. And it will also go in the other direction. So we, we re it really can move the machine in any direction. And we also have it's ceiling suspended, so there's nothing that will stop it turning all the way around. And we, this is what we call the box that has the light beam in it. We have a button that will um, put on the light, which will tell us where to look, you know, to, to position the area of interest. And we have a cross which we use to center to the area of interest. We have two um, buttons here which will control the size of the beam of the x-ray. So um, we can, we, then we only x-ray the area of interest and we don't actually irradiate any other part of the body that's not necessary. And we're ready to do the x-ray so we can go behind the control panel and set the exposure.